What's up, Womps, and Happy New Year. Welcome back to this month's episode of Womp TV. Today we take a look at student artists at BHS, immigration, a cobbler with ambition, and more. Let's get to it. For seniors, high school days are numbered and a new chapter of their lives is just around the corner. Some will enter the Union. Some of us have the desire to protect and serve the country in the armed forces. Shy and Aiden have the story on some Braintree recruits. Oftentimes, high school students are seen training for the big game, but these three friends are training for something much bigger. We've been friends for a long time. We've been friends since middle school. AJ since fourth grade. I went to base with Anthony. I met Anthony back in seventh grade from travel basketball. And I had known Shane since third grade. And we just grew up together. For Braintree High School seniors, Shane Gurley, Anthony Lahr, and AJ Tempesta, the friendship they have created over the years is one they truly cherish. We're always hanging out. We uh, go out to eat. We have like similar goals. Go to workouts on Mondays and Wednesdays. And they're just fun to be around. We're all just like goons, really. Like. <laughs> <laughs> we always laugh a moment with each other, like we just clicked. As they transitioned from middle school to high school, time drew closer for each of them to decide upon their future plans. Like many times before, they found each other together. I was thinking about it like halfway through my junior year, but this year at our college fair, that's when I like made up my mind to knew 100% sure like what I wanted to do. After high school, I plan on joining the Marine Corps. Um, I plan to also join the Marine Corps. Not many people join them compared to like Army and Navy. It like they demand more and it takes more to become a Marine than it is to become anything else. So I've never liked school so I knew I didn't want to do four more years so it inspired me to want to join the Marines which is like the biggest baddest branch. To be like the first out of my family as well mm. is like something that like I'm motivated for. I always had the thought in the back of my mind, it was always like a second option to me. But that college fair was a little different for AJ. I plan to join the Air Force. I feel like it fits me. What I really want is like an education. Community college is like one of the big things that the Air Force has. Shane, Anthony, and AJ will not allow the fact that they will not all be in the same branch hinder their friendship in any way. They see it as a way of strengthening their already unbreakable bond. I don't really feel alone. Uh, they're just going a different path. You know, they, they're choosing, you know, the hard way, which I obviously respect. They have a different, you know, game plan in their life. I have, you know, I want to do something else. We might not be going down the same, like, path, but, like, knowing that, like, we're all serving our country, that's something like huge. So like, I think that'll just bring us closer. We're the 1% of the population that like goes down this road or has gone down this road. That's just like an unspeakable bond that we have. We already respect each other a lot, but we're gonna respect each other even more. The boys are extremely excited for the road ahead. Yeah! But we'll never forget the great friendship they share. I'm just, I'm grateful that I could have like people like I can be myself around. You just like knowing that people have your back. I can always be comfortable on you guys. Reporting for WAMP TV, this is Aiden and Shy. Are you excited for the road ahead? <laughs> Am I? Yeah. What kind of question is that? <laughs> yeah. And uh, Along with the seniors taking on their new beginnings, a brand new decade is upon us. The 2010s brought us many classics that will not be forgotten. Luke and Shay brought us back and focused on just one of the memories we made along the way. Our generation is often criticized for being too attached to technology more particularly our phones or other video game devices at home. So it was a pleasant surprise to see a retro game coming back into style. Uno. 
But why has Uno become such a popular trend at BHS? Teacher Mr. Ritland seems to have no idea. Where the trend came from, I mean, if I had to guess, I'd probably say, you know, perhaps social media. Student Nathan Panza, an avid player of the game, seems to have a better idea, though. People want to revert back to nostalgic when their kids just doing silly things. Like, not, not silly, but like just fun things like board games, Uno, card games, just like to remember the past. To remember the past, something so simple that can do so much more than just provide a good time. You know, because if they're playing games on their phones, they're, they're just playing with their phone, and, and the phone is not a human being. Whereas if they're, you know, engaging with fellow human beings and playing a game like Uno or whatever, I mean, I mean that obviously requires, you know, human interaction, which, which, which is really beneficial. Yes, I did. A lot of people are like, exclusive to their own, like, friend groups, and I just believe um, just card games in general, just interacting with one another, it'll kind of, like, bring like, a feeling of closeness, friendship. And bring people together it has. Former BHS student Andrew Higgins uses his love for the new trend as a way to reconnect with his friends now that they're all off at college. I feel like we connect strongly because of UNO because like when we were away at school we obviously didn't hang out and we started that and that was like a fun way to like you know talk smack to each other and just like get back into the group of things and then when we got back for the summer we were all talking about UNO and just like hey I'm gonna beat you next week like stuff like that. And still, to this day, the students at BHS are always finding a way to keep this game from falling out of style. Yeah, so on our last uh, field trip that we took to Austria and Germany, uh, a couple of boys challenged me to a game of Uno, and I you know, decided I would play. And uh, it was very interesting how these guys had um, changed the rules of the game. I mean, uh, they, they started inventing their, old, their own cards. In, in Uno, at least the way how, how like we play it, if you have, if you like add plus twos, they can go because they either like four, six, eight. Somehow we all made it to drawing thirty two cards for one person. So I just thought that was just a very lovely moment. Reporting from WAP TV, this has been Shay Turpin and Luke Higgins. Maybe it's just a spotlight upon them, but students from Braintree High lit up the room with their fabulous performances. Mary and Sophia caught up with Chris Fulton and Anthony Samuel will bring their talent to the stage. Wapstock is an annual showcase at BHS for students to express their musical talents for family and friends. And on January 9th, students took to the stage and did just that. There's people playing the guitar, there's people playing the mandolin. It's just for anybody who has a passion for music. For seniors Anthony Samuel and Chris Fulton, this night was especially important for them. For Wompsock, I performed three original songs that I produced. Independently, they brought their own ideas from behind the scenes to the spotlight. I'm definitely a big tea drinker, so I like to get some tea, sit down, relax for a little bit, and then just sort of whatever emotions I feel, whatever I feel for that day, I'll sort of um, write it down and get to work. Standing in the border rain. I kind of sat down, it just took me a couple of days, and I was just like, what can I do for this? And just one day it just came to me, like out of nowhere. I'm like, oh, that's, that's pretty cool. <laughs> As artists, Anthony and Chris had to start somewhere. I've been writing for a while, like since I was a kid pretty much. You know, me and my brother and my sister, we all like do music together. So that's something that I do like to relieve stress and just to uh, like be in my own element. By being able to showcase their originality, their music journeys have shown drive. It was tough at first, just like learning everything because like you sort of, you open it up and then it's, you're like throwing into like a world of like, what do I do? Like how do I actually make something out of this? Progression. I started off just playing the egg shakers in one of the songs, and ever since then I just grew to playing the guitar. Inspiration. Um, I was listening to a lot of like love songs at that point. I was sort of like branching off of those and saying, oh, like what could I do with that? Like, could I make that my own? And a pathway for a potential future. Uh, working on an album, trying to release it this year. My goal for my music is to get it to a point where I can like sustain my own, like, like sustain living with it. My overall goal is just to write something that people can connect with, that people can sing along and just be happy with for like the two or three minutes that it's on. I just look up to be my own person in this like in this whole industry of music and I just think, hey, maybe maybe I can make it as myself. We wish both Every musicians day. good luck as they strive for their goals. Some people they like play sports or whatever or like they dance. Like for me, music is my thing. Reporting from Walt TV, this is Mary McDonough and Sophia Chow. Hi, I'm Kaylee, and welcome to the special edition of Womp Talk, 
where we will be playing a quick game of Decade Trivia. I'm here with senior Maggie, teacher Miss Egbert, and senior Colin. Thank you all for coming. How are you guys today? I'm, I'm good. Are you guys excited? Yeah. I'm so excited. I don't think I'm going to do well. I'm very hey. confident right now. You've got to be confident. I'm not. I'm way too confident. I'm all right. <laughs> <laughs> the rules are simple. The questions will appear and you will all answer them. Remember, all the questions are based on the 2010s. All right, let's start with question number one. Lady Gaga's Born This Way was released in what year? Oh, Jesus. come on. I don't know. <laughs> You guys got it. No. Remember, 2010 to 2020. So between then. <laughs> um, you know what? It's not. time is ticking. All right. <laughs> yeah, guys. All right, time is up. Okay. All right, okay. ready? And you guys can flip your boards. All right, Maggie is 2013. Miss Egbert is 2010, and Colin is 2010. And unfortunately, no. the right answer is 2011. Oh, yeah, no. I'm sorry. You looking mad? No. Sure. All right. Okay. It's okay. It's okay. I Three more questions to catch up on. It's correct. okay. You put 2009 first. I, I know. <laughs> I was thinking that the first one. What's the first song she had? That Toxic? Was, yeah. No. no. That's Britney talk? Spears. No, that's Maybe. Oh. oh. <laughs> Wait. Close. Wait. Um, uh, um, what was it? It's like. Um, that she drops her the phone. It's like one. Oh, she that's drops like 2009. She, Tennessee. No, about no. All right. Unfortunately, I'm gonna have to. We're gonna skip this <laughs> topic decade. and move on. Uh, I'll All stay right. In the right decade on to time. question number two. What popular social media app shut down in 2017? Oh, I got this oh, one. Come on. Oh, I'm not gonna know this one. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> You know it. You know it. Yeah, you should just. You know it. Just think. <laughs> think just, hard. just think about it for a little bit. Shut down. But less than ten seconds. If I'm wrong, it's very embarrassing. What? If I'm wrong, no, it's very embarrassing. No, you're probably right. You're probably by your wrong. Reaction. Actually, you're probably right. Wrong. All right. Oh, I'm not. I, got, I got this done in six seconds. No, I'm not gonna know. <laughs> All right, and then I'm gonna write one that I know it still exists. All right, <laughs> and so reveal your boards. <laughs> oh my! All right, know. Colin and Maggie got it right. Let's go. Unfortunately, Snapchat. Snapchat is not correct. <laughs> it is Vine, <laughs> but oh it was Vine a good guess. Like a it was videos. good effort. Vine All right. was the six-second video. Yes. Yes. it was yes. amazing. Absolutely, it just. Yes. It was now. incredible. Changed my decade. I was it is really very sad missed. when it got Definitely. <laughs> canceled. Alrighty. It didn't impact my life, apparently. <laughs> what quarterback led the Philadelphia Eagles to victory over the New England Patriots in Super Bowl 52? I didn't know there were going to be sports. Oh, questions. I know this. I, think, I, know this I think you guys will know this one, but... You're kidding. Oh, no. Just think. Just oh, think. Oh, my God. It's in led there. The it's in there. To led the Eagles? Yes. Against yeah. the Patriots, so the Eagles this. won what against city the Patriots. Is that? My family Philadelphia. is Philadelphia. My family's Philadelphia? from Pennsylvania, oh. so they were very. All right. Um, I don't. About this. I know he's. I'm probably gonna be wrong, actually. Oh, I'm gonna. Crap. I'm gonna pick a wrong one. Oh my god! Just Did for they fun. get a different one? Oh. I don't know. Okay. I hope I'm correct. All right. Are you guys all ready? Yeah. Okay. Show me your answers. I think you're right. I did the Philly cheesesteak. <laughs> <laughs> unfortunately, you're all Eagles incorrect. Right that is a good ask. guess, but unfortunately, no. The answer is Nick Foles. What the heck? Who's Nick Foles? Oh, because Carson Wentz was, Wentz was hurt, wasn't he? Yes, yes. he was hurt. I'm he not was... a sports person, not sure, but I know that's the right answer. Oh my God. <laughs> he got arrested for um, dog, the dog fighting. The dog fighting, yeah. yeah. Aww. But he yeah, played for the Eagles, so I have the right team. <laughs> you do have the right Alrighty. team. We won't so tell Mr. Kral. To our Eagles final game. question. <laughs> oh, no. I know, sadly. This is not been good. All right, so our fourth and final question. A few years back, there was a popular clothing item that sparked controversy between many people on what colors it was. Name the item and the colors it was thought to be. There are four colors. That's my hint to you. Um, Wait, so we do all four colors? Yes. Do we have to pair them correctly? You, no, no, it's okay. I think we should. You can if you want. <laughs> I think that should be <laughs> if you're If you're positive, if you're confident. Of course I'm positive. You all seem to be very Wait, confident what's the fourth in your answers. Color? Oh, yeah. What's the fourth color indeed? <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> I don't need to ask My that colors are right. not right. No, okay, wait. Yeah, no, you're not going to call it. Okay, sure. Okay, you guys ready? <laughs> all right, show me your boards. 
Black gold. Correct. Oh, no, this not the colors. Close. It's blue, black, white, and gold. No. Yes. Yes. But I was correct. Unfortunately, you didn't reveal what it was. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess Maggie won nice. this nice. round. Nice work. Right. Yeah. So, I got you next time, man. Uh, the 2020s, uh, I'm going to crush it. I'm going to oh, yeah, keep still gonna track be of everything. Here. Oh. All, right. All right. Isn't it cool how many things have happened over the last 10 years? Time really flies. It does. That it does. When you're yeah. having fun, just like our time here, For right? Sure. Yeah. For Can sure. I get your guys' agreement on that? Yes. yes. All right. <laughs> All right. Thank you we for had being. Fun. Oh, <laughs> there you go. I need a rematch. All right. Thank you guys for being with us today, Thanks and thank us. you guys for being with us today also. And we will see you next time on Womp Talk. Many of us were born and raised in the same town, city, or even state. However, not all, as some of our WAMP TV team discovered, some of the journeys that three Braintree residents have experienced. To start us off, BHS faculty member Miss Jameson has a story of her own. Allison and Brendan gave us an inside look on the beloved Spanish teacher and her path to teaching here at BHS. At Braintree High School, you may know the Spanish teachers Mr. and Mrs. Jameson, who happen to be a married couple. Here in Braintree High School, this is my fourth year working. Many may also know that Mrs. Jameson is an immigrant. I was born in Lima, Peru. Unlike Mrs. Jameson, Mr. Jameson has been in the U.S. for all of his life. I was born in Texas, but uh, we moved here in Massachusetts when I was in second grade. Mr. Jameson hasn't stayed in the U.S. for all of his life. So after college, I went down to Peru to teach at American School of Lima. Like Mr. Jameson, Mrs. Jameson also worked at the American School of Lima. I first started as a coach. I was a volleyball player before, so I was coaching volleyball in elementary and high school. And I was working with the preschool program and then with high school phys ed. I was actually a teaching intern, so the purpose was, you know, I hadn't taken any teaching courses, so I wanted to see if um, teaching was something that I really wanted to do. Also, I wanted to see uh, travel, live in a different part of the world. While working at the American School of Lima, they crossed paths. And so I met her like my first week down there. The Jamesons quickly knew that they were meant for each other. They fell in love. You know, we knew pretty quickly, you know, knew that she was the one. But for Mr. Jameson, everything wasn't perfect. It was difficult because my visa, you know, you need a visa to, to work. So my visa was running out and we didn't know what was going to happen. To come to the States, you need a visa and other countries to require a visa. The plan was for us to get married. My visa was running out, so we were going to come. You know, she was going to come with me. We we're going to all move to the States, so as family. We are going to make our life there, our new, raise our new family there. And so that's what we did. The Jameson family moved to the United States to start a new life. My transition in the States wasn't Terrible. You know, we're very, we're very blessed. You know, so my family, um, you know, lives in the area, and um, so she was immediately able to make connections. Now, Mrs. Jameson has become accustomed to her new life as an American. I go to visit my family once a year. You know, we're blessed; we can go once a year or so. Um, but after two, three weeks there, I just want to be home. To me, Braintree now feels like home. The Jameson story shows how home is anywhere you surround yourself with the people you love. Reporting for WAMP TV, this is Allison Knox and Brendan Driscoll. Italian immigrant Vincenzo Dorado mends his way through life. Colin and Darren take us with them as they discover the wonders of Braintree's cobbler, Vincenzo. Braintree is full of all kinds of shops, restaurants, clothing stores, and grocery stores. But on the edge of town, there's a small, Hidden gem. Meet Vincenzo Dorado, an 87-year-old cobbler that is just happy to be doing something at this point in his life. Well, it was after uh, the Second War in Italy, it was a little tough for you because after the Second War there, you know, it was nothing, nothing. Really special, a small town, it was no job, nothing. No, Vincenzo didn't go to school for shoe repair. He was actually self-taught. I started to learn the, the trade, the, the shoe, but then, you know, it was not, nothing there. We just have to do the thing by the scratch. You know, we have to buy the piece of skin, leather. Vincenzo wasn't always here in America. He was an immigrant from Italy who moved here when he was 34. 
When I came to this country in 1966, I started to work with somebody in Boston. After working in Boston, Vincenzo moved into his own store in Milton, but things didn't go as planned. He was there 27 years a year. After I built a restaurant, I have to move, move out, and now I have 90 years a year. But Vincenzo makes up for it with his positive attitude. Ah, uh, what, what you can do? Vincenzo's Milton shop wasn't the only shoe repair shop closing. The shoe repair industry is a dying one in itself, and Vincenzo is very aware. Yeah, it's not to know what to know more. You know, the way they make the shoes now is some composition. You take a lot of pins and a lot of time, and there's no money at all. After working in an industry for 72 years, most would think of taking a break. But Vincenzo just doesn't want to take a seat. Uh, I am 87. I don't know if I got chance at the time. My problem is I can't say no. If I don't make money, the time I spend. Vincenzo doesn't just do it for the money. He also finds it to be very rewarding in another way. But this is the way I hear. I like it to be, you know, you put it I don't make no money, but I can say no. If you ever have a pair of shoes that need fixing, visit Vincenzo and you'll see him working hard. Reporting from Mom TV. This has been Darren Damon and Colin Doherty. You must have a lot of patience, though. <laughs> As Drake Parker once said, your ping is no match for my pong. Alex took a look into the life of the Chinese immigrant Sky Gao and his involvement in Braintree High's very own ping pong club. For sophomore Sky Gao, ping pong has been around him since his early childhood. It's like I think it's when I was 10, yeah, yeah, yeah. I started, and then at gym in 7th grade, and then I played ping pong. I was like, oh, I think I remember something, yeah, and, then, yeah. and then I started playing. He says his uncle inspired him the most to start playing. I went to my uncle's workplace. Oh, there's the ping pong table. And I played with him, right? I played a couple of rounds, and then <laughs> it, it, it was bad. Now, over six years later, Sky is a member of the ping pong club and has his own paddle which he got as a special birthday gift. It's actually my birthday present, right? And then my dad told his friend to bought me it. They shipped it to America. His family had to ship the paddle because they got it in China. China is actually where most of this guy's friends and family are as his immediate family moved to America in 2016. I lived in China, I think it's just 12 years. Then I moved uh, to the United States. Ping pong has a long history in his Chinese family which he now brings to Braintree High School. My dad actually learned ping pong when, when he's like young, and then it just brings to my uncle. My uncle uh, plays ping pong really well, and that, that's when he taught me how to play ping pong. He taught me how to play it. This guy also brings a big part of Chinese culture with him to America, with how popular ping pong is back home in China. So ping pong is part of uh, one of uh, my culture. My family's friends around it, like they're playing ping pong too, mm -hmm. so it's kind of popular sports. For Sky, he plans to play ping pong for a long time, nearly as long as his family had been playing. For the rest of my life, I'll just hang out with my friends and definitely play, play till I can't play anymore, you know. Much like life in ping pong, one small adjustment can change the game. The game of ping pong has always been the same for Sky. But the game of life is always changing, especially for this Chinese-born sophomore. Reporting for WAMP TV, this has been Alex Jaworski. That's it for this episode of WAMP TV. Please check us out on Instagram and Twitter at WAMP TV. Also, subscribe to our YouTube channel by visiting www.youtube.com backslash WAMPTVBHS. Make sure you take a look at the WAMPcast, the podcast for Braintree High, by Braintree High, on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. No, you're not!